the Algebra 1 practice test for T and ready on this version of the test. That's question 21. Hayden solved this equation using the steps. X, the absolute value of x minus 3 is equal to 4. For step 1, he said x minus 3 is equal to 4. For step 2, he eliminated the minus 3 by adding 3 to both sides, and he came up with the solution of x is equal to 7. And that's all that's fine, it's just that he forgot the rest of it. There's another part to this that you need to address. And the reason that you need to, I mean, let's look at it from a graphic, uh, like making a graph, a graphical perspective, I guess. Um, when, if I was going to graph this, I'd need to eliminate plus 4, so I'd subtract 4 from both sides. This is what I'd end up graphing, so let's graph that and just take a look at it, and then see, uh, you'll have a, maybe a better feel for it. I'm going to math and this. See how as x goes up towards positive, you have uh, one set of data, and then as it goes to the right, it sort of mirrors it with the vertex acting as a point of reflection. So you have to adjust for x minus 3 equals 4 being part of it, but there's also going to be a part that's negative as well. So the way that we deal with that is to treat it as x minus 3 is equal to 4, and then the negative of that, which would just be negative 1, equals x minus 3 is equal to 4. What you might have been taught, and that's totally fine because it ends up getting you to the same place, is that you do x minus 3 is equal to 4 and x minus 3 is equal to negative 4. In this case, it gets you to the same place. I just tend to do it in this format simply because of the fact that I'm trying to think ahead about, okay, when we have to teach graphing, how are we going to remind people that the x is you know, there's a positive and a negative version, and they reflect. It's just a tool, but in this case, uh, we'll end up with the same thing. So x minus 3 is equal to 4. Well, that's here, but the other one is x minus 3 is equal to negative 4, and that answer is right there, as d. Well, what about this? The way that I've shown over here, what's that about? Instead of distributing this, which I don't want to, the easier move here, because I'm eventually trying to get positive x, is just to divide the entire thing by negative 1. Because those two cancel and you end up with x minus 3 is equal to da, 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 negative 4. So there are your answer choices. Um, Hayden should include the opposite of 7. The opposite of 7 would be negative 7. The problem is, if he had just had this, for instance, and he'd taken the square root, yeah, that could have gotten you the opposite of that. You know, that's fine. So, um, Unfortunately, that's not what it is. There's an additional term inside the absolute value, so that whole thing doesn't. That kind of goes out the window. For the reciprocal, the reciprocal of 7 is 1 7th. Not sure why you'd ever need that. And the other one, it's just trying to can be confusing. You'll notice that I had this, uh, and if you just look at it directly, you may think, oh, well, the negative 1 goes in front of the x, and it's, uh, then I'd get this and give me plus 3, and then uh, like if I distributed it, for instance this and this, you do end up with negative 1x plus 3, but it's equal to 4 and not negative 4. So that's why that one would be incorrect. And since I'm usually, when I'm trying to solve these, looking for what x is and not what negative x is, I would have to divide everything by negative 1. And that would get me back to x. That's, that is the absolute laziest negative 1 I've ever done. Uh, this would be negative 3 and this would be negative 4, which is exactly what this is. So. Whichever way you were taught in the beginning to split those sorts of things, that's fine. Just make sure you do both parts, and then make sure that the math that you solve all the way down to uh, is done appropriately so you get down to simplest form.